I'm James. And I'm Dan. We're the Ragamuffins. And this is our first impressions of the brand new Sleep Token album, Take Me Back to Eden. I mean, a lot of the first songs on the album, we'd heard a single straight away. Yeah. Um, which we reviewed on the podcast. You can go back and listen to some of those. But I think some great songs on there. Choke Hard and the Summoning, the Summoning is just a great one-two to kick off the album, I think. It's very strong. Um, seeing them live especially has been incredible. Um, a really, really good experience. And I think hearing them in the grand scheme of the album, and I think we'll touch upon it a little bit more, is it feels like they've ordered the album very well in terms of the songs. The structure of it is very well thought through. Yeah. The only thing I would say is it's a bit of a shame that basically the first five tracks were released as singles because mm. when you come to when it comes to listening to the album for the first time, you kind of have this urge to kind of just rattle through them and just skip to the new stuff straight away. But I think when going back to listen to it again as as like a complete thing, now that we already know all of the songs, it'll probably sort of blend together a bit better, I guess. And there won't be that urgency to kind of just get through to the new juicy stuff. Oh, for sure. And I think the amazing thing on this album in particular, I think, is we've always seen a lot of variety from Sleep Token. Mm. There's always been dipping in and out of various genres, um, really being so diverse that you can't really pin them down to being in a certain single genre and so distinctive still within their sound, which is, is very unique, that it's perfectly displayed, I think, across this album. You you have, like, the heavier tracks, probably some of the heaviest moments in Sleep Token discography. For sure. Um the, the summoning vor um the end section and take you back to eden the actual song is incredibly heavy and probably some of the gnarliest parts they've done but then there's such delicate moments of the emotion that you kind of got anyway through sleep taken music well i mean let's let's look back to um once once you've got through all the singles we've already heard you get to the end of vor and you get to um ascensionism which starts off with kind of some spooky piano and then drops into a bit of a rap, which is the first time we've really heard much of that kind of stuff from Vessel. Vessel's but, got bars. But again, it works. There's, I mean, that song is a great example of it, but there's so many times when there's those transitions from genre to genre almost within the same song, and they'll switch it up so many times, but it's so seamless in those transitions that it's not as jarring as you kind of expect it to be. Yeah, it never feels like they've gone, right, I want to do a rap verse on this one and mm. just kind of shoved it in it's it's still being crafted together like intricately with a lot of thought put into it the time has gone in to obviously with it being a trilogy as well of, of tying things in together with sundowning and uh this place will become your tomb but i think having that much thought and processing kind of going through how to structure the album how the songs are done the songwriting the, the process little nuances they have in there you can tell and it's translated across perfectly, I think, to a to a listener at that point. You you can hear that very very clearly, that they've thought about every little minute detail, mm. and and then to pick that up, I think on the on the other side of it, um, you don't get many albums that are like that necessarily. And I think that's what does make Sleep Token so special, and I think unique is that no one else really does what they do. We found ourselves kind of grinning at points, didn't we? Like. It feels like ages ago now since we, we first heard the summoning, but like the first time you hear that jazz beatdown section at the end, it's a bit like you're kind of just smiling to yourself because it's, it's such an absurd idea, but it works so, so well. And you find that across other moments on this album as well. Like on um, Ascensionism, we've already mentioned, there's that rap verse that comes in. And again, we looked at each other and we were kind of just smiling and almost laughing just because it seems like such an absurd idea. But again, it works. Same with another rap verse in Take Me Back to Eden, the title track. It it happens and it works. It adds value to the song. It It's just great. There were some moments, to be fair, on, on songs like the longer songs like Take Me Back to Eden and Ascensionism where... Whereas a bit slow towards the start, you're thinking you you start to feel a little bit skeptical. It's like, well, okay, where are they going with this? What's what's happening? But then it all leads up and builds to this like these huge moments towards sort of the middle and the ends of the songs. And I think you kind of need those ambient building moments towards the start. I'm basically basically describing progressive rock here, but yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, you kind of need that ambience and that kind of build up to really make those big moments at the end big. Oh, for sure. Um, I think that there are like a couple of misses on it. Personally, for me, I found that the apparition and don't you wish that you love me, 
they kind of fell a bit flat when listening to it as a whole kind of album at that point. I wasn't a fan of it, uh, Don't You Wish That You Love Me, when it came out initially. Um, it's grown on me, but I think when you're listening to the grand scheme of it being 12 songs, and like I mentioned, being a long album and still keeping you pulled in, those songs just didn't hit the mark as much as others did. And I felt like it would be an even tighter, better album if they weren't on there. Um, but I don't think it massively takes away from that listener experience of being absolutely sucked into this world and kind of experiencing all kinds of emotions, I think, throughout it as well. That It beautifully displays that. See, I think Do You Wish That You Love Me is um, quite an important song on the album, to be fair. You're right in saying that it, it kind of feels like it gets a bit lost in there with how big and grand some of the other songs in there are. But I think I've kind of noticed the sort of journey and the theme this album goes on. Like on the chokehold and on chokehold and the summoning, it feels a bit like the vessel sing about being in a chokehold, essentially. Like he's kind of a bit stuck and everything. But it kind of feels like as the album goes on, it's like he's kind of coming to a realization. And do you wish that you love me? For me, it feels like the point in the album where he's kind of going, "Well, why don't I like myself?" And then sort of the tracks after it, "Rain," take me back to Eden, and, and um. We we'll be going with Euclid. You, Euclid. 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 Um, the closing track in particular is like a realization of and an acceptance of I need to change my ways and like take care of myself a bit. And I think, yeah, do you wish that you love me is at that point in the album where things start to switch, I think. From my perspective, listening to them, I find the drumming so enthralling and I'm, I can't stop listening to it. Watching them live, I can watch two just play constantly and go through the whole gig just watching him play um but i did find that some of the drumming in the second half in particular although i guess with the storytelling kind of you get from it um it's understandable but it did feel like the drumming was quite pulled back i think they have very nuanced um drumming anyway and there are some moments even in like some of the softer songs or softer moments um like a reference with you with uh the love you want as they kind of come into that second verse there there's a lovely little fill which still kind of shows off the drumming, but it doesn't overpower the song. It's not too much. Yeah. It feels like they could have had those moments in in the latter half. Um, it did feel like it really was kind of pulled back, whether that was a conscious decision or not. I, I think don't it know. probably was. I think going a bit less hard on the drums kind of gives the rest of the song that room to breathe. And on, on the big songs like Take Me Back to Eden, the, the title track, it's it just gives the the song more time to go where it needs mm. to go and it goes a lot of places oh that's a bloody journey like mm. it goes everywhere um i do want to touch back on what you said about the, the final track euclid i think um we can't go without mentioning the ending yeah and this is what i mean it's like it's almost like vessels reflecting at this point and like looking back on everything because i mean there's the obvious callbacks there back to the very beginning of the journey not just um the start of sundowning but from stuff of off one and mm. two the eps with that lyrical reference to when the bow breaks i think you get a lot of bands who try and do callbacks to songs and it can feel forced i know i think yeah definitely i think you you guys had that a little bit more with the recent and yeah Shikari with the recent shikari and... album there's although they were it was good to have callbacks it there was maybe too many in there and some of them felt a little bit like they decided to do that before the rest of the song was formed yeah kind of thing. whereas, this, whereas it feels, this this is perfect yeah it doesn't feel like it's forced it feels very natural with it 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 feels like some fantastic storytelling it really does i mean i mean everyone talks about um the the law behind sleep token and a lot of that comes from just their appearance and everything like that because a lot of the content of the songs is kind of pers based on like personal stuff and, and not necessarily to do with gods and things although there are references to, to gods it's it's more of like a th thematic thing it's a massive um, display of emotion amongst their discography you mm. can kind of hear that everywhere and i think that's what so much of the appeal is because you don't get alternative music like them you can't compare them to other bands they're so distinct in their style um let alone the presentation although they get compared to other masked bands sometimes they are so distinct and different with that. I can't think of another band that would just seamlessly change and transition with different genres so easily 
um, as they and, do. And make it work. Yeah, well. and I don't feel like any of them, any of the, any of the transitions where it changes and where it's completely switch ups in the music, it's not jarring. It all makes sense. And down to the songwriting, I think that's a massive, like, a massive tip to them because, I mean, in particular, looking at, I think it was Euclid, there's some really clever points where kind of the other instruments come in on the off beats with it. It really pushes the song forwards and having that interesting dynamic between the piano and the vocals coming through and then the heavier side of Sleep Token, that the almost duality that you hear in their music, almost having a call and response back and forth with each other. Mm. I think that's some very clever songwriting and just everything is thought out in an amazing process and what they've been able to craft in here is something very truly special for me as well i think it's it's certainly an album of moments um like of course i think a lot of people are going to be talking about the breakdown at the end of take me back to eden yeah for sure a lot of people are going to be talking about the callbacks at the end of um euclid um there's stuff like the summoning um yes there's a lot of moments in this album but like i said before um it's sort of the the build up and the journey that you take on to get to those moments as well is almost symbolic in I guess the message that Sleep Token try and get across as well. Completely agree that, that you've got to go on this kind of personal journey to like get to a certain point. And I think that the nice payoff there is for fans that have been with them since Sundowning. Um and even before with the EPs, you're seeing like the end of this era happening here. Um and I think like you can connect to bands sometimes on a personal level um, and they can mean a lot of things to you. And I think if you're, you've followed that journey and you're, you're kind of coming full circle with that right at the end of this album, you're probably going to feel quite a lot of emotion to that, having that connection. And it shows how important musically, not just they are, but just how important music can be with that. Um, and to be able to kind of touch people and display that and convey that across, um, not many people can do that. And that takes a lot of skill and a lot of talent, and they they just pulled it off completely. It's amazing. So I guess we might as well try and wrap up and give us some final thoughts. Um, did you have any favourite songs? Kind of going outside of the singles that we had because I love Choke Hard, love Summoning. They were like my favourite too. Vaughn grew on me over time, but mm. we'll leave those to the side for the minute. Um, Ascensionism and Take Me Back to Eden in particular, I think were phenomenal songs. Um, mostly because of that just weird dynamic, you, you can change between the genres and it's still working. And I think sometimes if we're just going to class this under the broad umbrella of alternative music, um, it doesn't surprise you anymore. You can listen to some kind of genre out of that broad spectrum and you'll be like, cool, that's how it's going to stay. And mm. to be able to still be surprised by music sometimes and it work, is something very different and so they they really stand out strong to me how about you um i mean from the singles obviously the summoning was a huge standout but my personal favorite of the singles was actually uh, granite um i can't really put a pinpoint on why i just really really loved it but uh in terms it of bops live as well it does bop live um but in terms of the newer songs again ascensionism really stood out but that that double ending of take me back to eden and euclid would just it's powerful one it's too. It's really, really, really powerful stuff. I think this is going to be a, a massive album. It would be very interesting to see after some time the fallout of this and kind of where it stands in the landscape for them because they've blown up so much this year already. Um, and it ends on a positive as well, really. Yeah, it does. To see how their journey is going to keep going forward from here because I feel they can only keep going up from this. I was very apprehensive with this release going like prior to it because of the length of the album being over like an hour and 15 or around an hour and 15 sometimes can be very draining. Mm. And I think they've managed to nail it just to kind of keep everyone intrigued and engaged yeah. for that length of time, which is perfect. I do do think as well, this album's probably not for everyone. I think True. there's going to be, it's it's probably an album aimed at people that have a bit of a broader and more open-minded music taste, I think. Very, very agree. Because um, obviously there's going to be people that will have heard the summoning and be like, yeah, this is heavy as fuck, I love this. But then they'll come and listen to this album, they'll get a song like, Are You Really Okay? Which is has like maybe some 80s guitar vibes in there. Definitely, it's definitely. It's essentially a bit of a sad pop song. And they're not going to like that at all. Whereas 
I think it's a lot for those diehard sleep token fans. It's for the diehard sleep token the fans. It's it's for people that are open to to new music and experimental stuff, and I think in the modern day people have a much broader music taste anyway. So mm-hmm. I know a lot of people. A lot of people will be in the comments on this video probably saying they're not a metal band. Why are they just? Why are they classed as a metal band? It's like, well, no, they're not anything. They're not one particular genre at all they're a band that you really can't pigeonhole as to what they are yeah um they're so diverse and so special with, special with that and why does everyone need to have a label with the kind of music they are mm. that's just enjoy it for what it is if you don't like it and it's not for you that's fair enough there's going to be bands that are going to be like that but there isn't a band that's really doing what they're doing and i think they're very special for that and to to enjoy that is, is something very good yeah but i guess the point i was trying to make is this isn't necessarily a, an accessible album it's not particularly easy to listen to especially like you said yourself seeing the length of the album seeing that it's over an hour long and you're thinking oh my god this is gonna this is a bit daunting um but i think if you stick with it and you give it a go it's it's rewarding it it gives something to it and and to compare it to their previous two albums it's probably the least accessible and the most difficult yeah. to listen the most challenging to listen to but i think in terms of a work of art and just a piece I think this might be their best album. I completely agree. I think as an overall kind of piece of work, um, this is where they've peaked so far. And seeing that trajectory of just them just keep going up and up um, does make me very excited. I mean, this has only just come out, but still does make me very excited into where they go from here, what happens next, because they are only on the rise. Um, We saw them earlier this year on the UK tour, which you can check out the vlog for, and it was just absolutely packed in there. Um, American tour, I believe, sold out like sold out in minutes. Like that it was gone. Um, yeah, I think they're only on the rise. Be very intriguing to see how their reception is at Reading and Leeds Festival. I'm kind of intrigued by that mm, in the summer. Yeah. Um, but also just to see what happens the rest of this year and, and see how they progress. Because if they're not on your radar and you're kind of only just finding out about them, you need to be listening to them and checking them I, out. I know it's early to be thinking about the next album or the next thing they release as well but it's going to be intriguing as well to see what they do next having three albums or well two and three quarter of an album and two EPs that have been like a pretty on the miserable side to say the least and the self-loathing side to then have a song ending on such like a positive note and like a, a feeling of change it's going to be very interesting to see what kind of route they go with next but that's our thoughts. I mean, let us know down in the comments below. What do you think of this album? Um, are you an old Sleep Token fan and kind of getting all that nostalgia through and all those kind of nods back to previous material? Is this kind of a newer release? Are you a fan of them this year? Do you not like them? Why do you not like them? Why is it not for you? But let us know down below. Like the video. Um, We've got a whole bunch of Sleep Token content on the yeah. channel as well. So go and check it out. There's, there's vlogs. There's more reviews. There's... There's loads of stuff. Just go and have a look. There's plenty of sleep token. But apart from that, we're hitting festival season at the minute. Slam Dunk is right around the corner. We've got Downhill Festival, 2000 Trees, probably Burn It Down Festival as well because that's looking quite tasty. Subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all kinds of things in metal and alternative music with our monthly podcast as well. All kinds of great things on the channel. So subscribe. Get that button down there. Go. Go.